This was quite possibly the most common question I got asked on my systems programming and theory videos that I've done recently. The question was, how do you learn this stuff? Like, how do you get good at programming? How, like, do you have any books, resources, courses you can recommend? Because I think people in general want to get from a point where they're the ones watching the tutorials to where maybe they could make the tutorials. And so I got asked because, you know, obviously I'm making the tutorial. Uh, you know, what, how, how did you get to this point? How do you learn all of this stuff that, you, that, you've, that you've learned? And so today I'm going to sort of go over my thoughts on that because I think my take is a little bit nuanced and, and a bit different to what you might be expecting. So let me preface by saying this. If you are expecting to come away from this with um, a golden book or a golden tutorial that you can bookmark and just teach yourself programming, you're going to be disappointed because my take is quite different. I'm going to turn that almost on its head in this video. What do I mean by that? So in my opinion, I don't think it's sure if, if you're like new, brand new, and you find a good resource on programming, you can bookmark it, but it's not sustainable. And, and this is why. So when you get to a more advanced level in programming, you might have a more niche question that you need answered, right? Like you're trying to do something that maybe hasn't been done by a lot of people before. So if you've bookmarked one of these websites uh, or you're like reading from this textbook, it may not have the answer that you're looking for. And so in my opinion, the skill is not actually um, in finding good resources and bookmarking them. The skill is actually how fast and how efficiently can you filter out bad resources? Because there are thousands and thousands of good resources on the internet. And there are also thousands and thousands of bad resources that will just like waste your time. I'll give you an example of what I mean. So at work, I was on a project uh, where we were using C Sharp for a little bit. And um, I had not actually used C Sharp that much before. So I was kind of unsure of the syntax, you know, like what the standard library provided and things like that. And I needed to tokenize a string. Now, if you have done any programming before that works with data, you've probably uh, done string tokenization before, at least you kind of know what it means. Um, and so in my head, I'm thinking, I don't know how to do string tokenization in C, C sharp, sorry, my bad. I don't know how to do this in C sharp, but I know what it should look like. So I'm gonna Google C sharp tokenize a string. And I kind of in my head know what I'm looking for, okay? So when I get to a website, and it's spending like 75% of the page explaining string tokenization to me and giving me the background of like its whole life story about C Sharp standard library and all the string functions you can do in it. I am immediately clicking off that page. It's just wasting my time. I think my, if I had to guess, my average would be maybe 10 to 15 seconds to filter out a resource where I'm like, okay, this is, this is not what I'm looking for, wasting my time. Maybe even better, maybe even better than that, maybe five to 10 seconds. Um, because if you really know what you're looking for, you can filter out these resources very quickly. So really, that's the skill in my opinion, because when you get to be, start doing more niche stuff, that's not really um, covered in these like resources that you've bookmarked, that's gonna be a big thing, how not to waste your time. And I think it's gonna be even more important now that ChatGPT, like people are gonna be using ChatGPT to spam out absolute garbage articles with broken examples just on mass like uh, grifters absolute grifters are going to be doing that just looking for clicks looking for advertisements because the fact of the matter is the longer they can keep you on the website the more money they make from ads because the more ads they can serve you right you're scrolling the page they're like you know doing the ad carousel thing so like i'll give you another example there was a website that i needed to do something very simple in nginx the web server it i thought of understand, understood in my head, this is gonna be like a two line configuration change, two lines. And I was right, by the way, two line configuration change. I just needed to know what the configuration options were. This website, I could not believe this. This was absolutely crazy to me, but this website was titled, you know, how to do this configuration change in Nginx. And it spent 15 steps teaching me how to install Ubuntu on my web server before it actually told me what the configuration option was in nginx and i was like are you crazy i want to do a two-line change in nginx and you're teaching me how to install ubuntu like what is up with this and i i knew like within the first five seconds this is going to be a time-wasting resource but i just kept looking because i was so shocked i was like i just couldn't believe that 
you know, a resource would be this time wasty. So that's really the skill in my opinion. Like you want to get to a point where you're able to do that. And you might be thinking, Hoff, that's great. How do I get there? Because the prerequisite for being able to do that is that you know kind of what you're looking for before you go and look for it. So it's kind of a catch-22, right? It's like, well, if I don't know what I'm looking for, then I don't really know programming, but I'm trying to learn programming, so how do I not waste my time doing that? And so what I'll say is this, this is my take on it. A lot of people, when they're learning programming, will box themselves in. They'll say, I am learning C. I am learning JavaScript. And I'm talking about absolute beginners, by the way, absolute beginners. They'll say, I'm learning Python. What you should be doing instead is learning the fundamental concepts of programming with a language as a tool, okay? A lot of people get this mixed up. They will, and, and bear with me for a minute, um, and, and I'll explain what I mean. A lot of people will use the fundamental concepts of programming to teach themselves a language. Now, this is what you absolutely should be doing if you already know what you're doing, okay? If you understand the fundamental concepts of programming and you already know a few languages, then that's what you should be doing, right? You're teaching yourself a new language, drawing upon the fundamental concepts of programming that you already know. Because the fact of the matter is, they don't really change. Like, I'm talking about the core concepts, right? Like if statements, um, control flow, like loops, functions, objects, if you're doing OOP, stuff like that, that doesn't really change language to language. There, there are lots of differences between languages that, that actually matter. But those core fundamentals, when you're actually writing the code, it'll kind of look the same. Um, so if you're brand new, what you should be doing is using the doing it the other way around. You use a language as a tool to teach yourself the fundamental concepts of programming, right? So instead of saying, I'm going to learn Python, you should instead say, I'm going to learn programming. And to do that, I'm going to use Python. So it's kind of flips that idea on its head. And so once you learn the fundamental concepts of programming, when you need to Google something, you kind of understand already what it should look like. Like your mind is kind of connecting up the neurons to think, okay, this is what my program should look like according to the knowledge that I have. Now, um, the thing is like, so in order to learn those fundamental concepts, what I would recommend now, I can't honestly recommend any textbooks or courses. Okay. Because the fact of the matter is I am not a textbook or course guy. I have not used any of those to get to where I am today. Sure, I had courses in uni, but honestly, they don't teach you anything in my opinion. Like they do it really poorly. I'm literally there just to get the piece of paper that says I can do this stuff that I already know how to do. Um, most of this stuff, like I've taught practically myself. Now, in order to do that, what I would recommend is you sort of do some research on what the core fundamentals of programming are. What actually makes up a program? So when you're writing, in, and like I said before, some examples would be like if statements, um, loops, functions, objects, variables, data types. So pick a core concept of programming, okay? And then write yourself a program with the side goal of teaching yourself more about that particular concept. So this is what I mean. If you want to learn if statements, then you should write a program while using like while having in your head i'm going to use this to teach me more about if statements and so you might mess around with if statements while you're writing that program so just focus on one thing at a time until you have the absolute basics down so like write a program to teach yourself about if statements write a program to teach yourself about loops write a program where you split a bunch of stuff up into functions to teach yourself about that you know um and in order to do that you don't need uh, like a pages and pages long uh, like website or like you don't need a textbook you don't need a 45 minute video from some course grifter on Udemy and listen don't fall for the courses on Udemy it's an absolute grift if you have to pay somebody like all of this stuff is free all of this stuff is simple you don't need to pay a grifter you know a whole bunch of money to get access to a course where they're going to teach you the absolute basics okay my opinion is this if you've watched a tutorial and it's genuinely helped you, sure, you might want to donate to that person, whatever. But if you have to pay an upfront cost to watch it, it's a scam. It's a scam. Um, so don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. You can literally just look up, as an example, if statements in Python. 
the first web page that popped up when I did that was W3 Schools. Now, I will actually say if you're learning how to do this stuff, a few resources I would recommend. And remember, this is unsustainable. So just use it to sort of get yourself going. Um, W3 Schools, Geeks for Geeks, they have very simple examples, very simple explanations. And it's short, concise to the point generally from what I've seen. They don't usually beat around the bush wasting a whole bunch of your time. So I could recommend those. Um, if you're a course guy through and through and you really, really, really want to watch a course, I've heard good things about Harvard CS50. Now, that's a free sort of university tier course done by Harvard. It's all free. This is why I'm saying, like, don't, even if you want to watch a course, don't fall for the grift on Udemy, okay? Don't fall for the grift. CS50 is free. Go watch that. But anyway, my, as, as I was saying, my opinion is, you know, if you want to learn a fundamental concept like if statements, just look up if statements in Python. They'll give you some examples, write a program where you just mess around with them. And then once you learn all of these concepts individually, what, let me ask you a question. What do you think programming is? What do you think a program is? A program is essentially just, you are combining all of these fundamental concepts that you learn to do something useful. That's pretty much it. So once you learn all of these concepts, you can start combining them. So for example, I've learned about if statements and I've learned about loops. Now I might write a program that loops and then breaks out of that loop if a certain condition is met, right? You're kind of getting the, the vibe that I'm going for here. Like you, you do that and you combine all of these basic concepts together until you get a usable program. So yeah, that's pretty much it. To wrap up, don't fall for the grift. Um, teach yourself programming, not a language, uh, until you actually know what you're doing. And then you can use programming to teach yourself more languages. That's sort of the what I want to drill into you. You know, like so many people get caught up in tutorial hell where they're just like, you know, looking at a video and they're copy and pasting exactly what the person wrote. That's not what you want to be doing. You want to be learning the concepts and then you want to be using the language as a tool. And then from there, you can flip it around and start learning languages using the concepts as a tool. Um, now, resources I'd recommend, W3Schools, Geeks for Geeks, um, Stack Overflow. And this is the thing about Stack Overflow. Um, there's a lot of garbage on there. So you, like I said, you already want to have an idea of what you're wanting to do in your head. And then you look at a Stack Overflow post and you think, like actually try and understand what the code does. Copying and pasting from Stack Overflow isn't necessarily like the worst thing in the world, as long as you understand what the code does and it fits into that mental model that you've created for yourself. Like this is what I want my code to do. Um, and like I said, if you're a course textbook guy, CS50 by Harvard, um, the, the uh, K&R C book is also a classic. Uh, you can go and read that. I've read, I tried reading it, but like I said, I'm not a textbook guy. Um, the Manga Guide to Microprocessors, oh, what a joke. They're, they're, actually, they're actually pretty funny. I've got a couple of those books. <laughs> they're pretty entertaining. They're pretty entertaining. But yeah, that's pretty much my take on it, honestly.